and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Eusebio Carmona. He's joining us here as Global Pricing and HEOR Senior Manager at DeBioPharm. DeBioPharm is a biopharmaceutical company based in Switzerland focused on drug development and oncology and bacterial infections. He's joining us here to discuss the impact of health economics as well as some industry trends. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Eusebio Carmona. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure. Give us a, a bit of background. Tell us a bit about what it is that you do and talk briefly about your role at DeBioPharm. Sure. So I can start by giving you a little bit of background about who I am. So I'm a pharmacist by training, and I actually kicked off my career about eight years ago as so an inpatient in a community pharmacy. And I have to say that it was a beautiful job, but unfortunately, opportunities for professional development are quite limited in that field in Spain. And I have to say that I've always been very curious about economics. So I thought that the combination of drugs, economics, and business was the right thing for me. And that was actually confirmed when I got my first experience in, in, in Unreal, which is a pharmaceutical company in, in Spain. Um, I was supporting the market access team on health economics, and economics research, research issues. And later on, almost six years ago, I got the opportunity to move back to Switzerland to continue growing my expertise in the field. And I joined a strategic uh, market access and consult uh, and access firm. And after some time in consulting, then I, I, I moved back to the industry more concretely to uh, European headquarters of Biogen, where I had the chance to work in very interesting projects across very diverse therapeutic areas, so neurology, registries, and, and biosimilars. And just finally, very recently, back in November 2021, I joined the Biopharma as pricing and HR senior senior manager. In terms of my role at the biofarm, um, it's actually very hard to briefly define what we do. And this is actually what I like about my, my role that is extremely diverse. And unlike big pharmaceutical corporations where market access, pricing, and HUR function are split across uh, multiple roles, uh, the biofarm, we have the chance actually to cover all these ends. Um, so, for example, in the HR space, I'm responsible for making the payer and patient insights integrated into the early R&D processes and just to allow at later stages to deliver a more robust evidence package to our partners that will ultimately help them to leave barriers for patients uh, to access our treatment. In terms of pricing and market access trends, our team is basically responsible for monitoring uh, the rapidly evolving payer landscape and we also provide strategic recommendations to both our internal stakeholders as well as our commercial partners on, on access deliverables. What was it that interested you in health economics initially? I've always been quite interested in economics and business, but I was also a scientist. So I thought the health economics was the perfect intersection of both. And from a personal perspective, I see it as a function that has an enormous role and potential in building value for patients and removing barriers for an optimal and equal care. Also, I have to say that as a pharmacist and healthcare provider, that was that was a visit for me. And plus, and despite it's not a very modern discipline because it started back in the 70s in the UK, it is important and it's important is actually increasing both in the industry and the public sector. What makes it very attractive as well from a career development perspective. Now, I heard you mention removing barriers for patients. What other ways does health economics benefit the patients? So, well, the first principle of health economics is to make an efficient use of available economic resources, which in most of the cases are scarce. And this needs to be in line with maximizing health benefits. So in that context, health economics helps decision makers to provide the right care to the right patient and at the right time. So in fact, healthcare systems are involving patients actually directly in health economic um, assessments, and their opinions and expectations are increasingly uh, taken into, into consideration. I would actually dare to say that even though we are lower than I would like it to be, we're shifting from a paternalistic approach towards a more patient-centric approach when it comes to HTA assessments. But I feel actually that to make it real, uh, the industry as well as the health authorities need to involve patients in, in early stages into the development processes. And we need to work towards making patients our partners and not just our end consumers. 
Um, at the biofarm, completely, we're working very hard to understand better the needs and expectations that our patients have. And we're trying to find some ways to execute initiatives that really address them. For example, we're trying to give patients more voice and a bigger role in decision making. And we try to incorporate the feedback in clinical trial design and optimization of endpoints, for example. We also have some teams that are working on making the entire trial experience more patient-centric across the entire uh, process, so from enrollment to, to, the, to the end of the trial. While making it more patient-centric, uh, are patients understanding the impact of health economics on their particular care? Well, I don't believe that patients are very aware about what health economics is, and most of them, unless they are very experienced uh, with dealing uh, with regulators and, and payers, they understand that um, they just Feel, uh, or at the end, they just see the, the prices of, of the drug, but they are not really aware of the entire background process. That's what I feel. What about industry trends? Can you speak to that a bit? Yeah. So I think the life science industry is not an exception when it comes to digital and, and technology disruption. And in fact, it's one of the industries with, the, with one of the highest potentials to benefit from, from digital transformation happening. Actually, in fact, I was reading recently, and according to, to BBC Capital Markets, uh, about 30% of the world's data is actually being generated in the in the health industry, and that is that is a lot. And if we speak about health economics and national research more concretely, I see the field of evidence generation evolving more rapidly. So technologies are already playing a huge role in the way that we collect and leverage health data which ultimately will serve uh, as evidence for payers and, and prescribers. I have to say as well that real-world evidence uh, provides many benefits to, to developers, such as timely access to data and as well as relatively reasonable cost versus a more traditional um, development pathways. In any case, real-world data can help to provide a better representation of real-world practice, health outcomes and, and behaviors, and, and, and randomized control trials, actually. And also with a patient-centric mind, avoiding randomization can sometimes bring greater advantage to those patients who would have been randomized in the control arm and would have received an optimal care. And although we're seeing already some good progress in this space, I believe that there are still some efforts that, that are required to build acceptability of, of this approach, both by regulators and payers, and that, and that some more structure and, and some more structure uh, frameworks will be put in place soon, hopefully. Well, if you would, give us a website where we can learn more. I would definitely recommend to you visit our website, which is thebiofarm.com. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. I appreciate you uh, giving us some of your time. Thank you so much for this information. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.